So, pleased to be back. Yeah, it's nice, yeah. yeah. And Munich's pleased to be there, so <laughs> big reactions in town. Oh, of course. I, I came here in May actually for a stag do as well. Cool city. That was good fun, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, when we're touring, we don't often get to actually see, you know, like, um, yeah. the cities themselves often. So, yeah, it was nice to, it's a very pretty town. Cool, great. <laughs> great sentence to start. You've got Munich's hearts on your yeah. side now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had the pleasure of already, already listening to album really enjoyed it so oh, thanks for that. Um, took four years in the making which is a pretty long time. Not really four years. It was four years like, since the last one. Yeah. It took like a year and a half, two years. But we were touring for so long but yeah. Okay so it's just down to touring because we had some reader questions sent in and people were saying that ah, four years was such a long time and that every day I was just updating my laptop, seeing when will the album be out, but it was just down to touring. Yeah, I mean, if, 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 we, if, we could, if we could start writing immediately after the second album came out, obviously that would be a long time, but you don't really do that. You know, it's not the first thing you want to do. You just release an album, okay, let's write a new one. You know, Some do bands it. do, I guess. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> no, because no, we, we love playing and touring and stuff, so, you know, obviously we finished recording this album, like, in December. Yeah. Uh, the album's not coming out till April. We're going to tour until at least probably the summer after this one. But we will. We're definitely going to try and do some writing on the way. But um, you know, it's it, it's nice to give each album when you've worked on it for so long, give it you know proper attention and make sure that you tour it properly and try and yeah make people aware that it's actually out there. We've heard from some bands before that they kind of get tired of touring. That's not something which. Which you're experiencing or going to experience in the near future? You definitely get, you have moments when you're really tired, obviously, but like yesterday, me and Todd, like all day, we're just kind of. Oh. But it's like you're not, you're not tired of, of touring. touring. From you, touring. You, or? Yeah, it's more like you, you get exhausted um, to, the, to the level that like you kind of like, you can't really do anything in a day. So you're kind of like, you just like, you know, no energy, you can't, you get all the energy is sucked out of you. And then it comes to showtime and you're like, oh, are we going to be able to do this? Then you go on stage, it's like this little switch that's getting flicked and then all of a sudden it's just like, oh everything's good now. Yeah, I'm, I'm back, I'm, I'm alive. Back. I'm, I'm alive, yeah, and this is like, this is the way it should be. And then you do like an hour and a half and it's like, whoa, it's amazing. Then you come off and half an hour later it's like, <laughs> you're back. Then that's that, what you Obviously that's probably not the time when you need to be writing the new album then. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One question I had in my mind was that um, you said in interviews in the past that you always had um, well, your own stories stuck into the past albums, past songs, that was always like a bit of a biography. Um, have the stories like changed completely? Because I could imagine that you just run out of material, so, hey, we've said what our life's like, and that's it. Or, or do you still get these new stories that you want to work on, and new, new influences? I think, or, like, to be honest, probably 80% of like Wombat songs, uh, obviously Murph writes all the lyrics and they are pretty much like always linked with something that's happened, you know, there'll be an event or something that will yeah, trigger a song. Um, yeah, whether it's all true or not, like, I mean, it, at least it starts with that and then it kind of, it sometimes it gets, it gets a little bit exaggerated. I think that's why we don't really do much like, so, you know, finished writing on tour, like we have musical ideas and we'll have like jams and sound checks yeah. and stuff, but um, it's obviously like a lot of like what you do on the tour is kind of repetitive and it's not really like a, a live style that like that many people can connect to us but you know it's like it's not gonna make a good ground for like necessarily like a good song mm. and such I think. But um, yeah definitely on this album it's it's kind of I guess it's similar and there's always like themes of escapism and stuff that obviously don't have to be based in like reality but um, often they'll be like one of the songs, Greek Tragedy, was um, we'd sort of like done the music for it and Murph wrote on top of it. And when he came into the studio, he was going through like breaking up with an ex, get like a girlfriend, and getting together with a new girlfriend. And this song came out, which was obviously like kind of honest to what was uh, happening at the time. So, and I think it's a really good way to write as well. And obviously, it served us well in the past. Um, like honesty, people can always well not always, but. People yeah. relate to things that have I mean, really happened, I guess. Going back to what you said uh, about like, you know, whether you run out of topics to write, yeah. or whether it's a, 
you know, similar topic, but it's a different story. You know, like it's always got to like you, you if you if you write about real happening. So you know, maybe in you know three four years time, it will be another breakup, or you know, like it could be like something else, or another party, or another you know, like whatever. You know, uh, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's a different twist on kind of like the the same. Unless you grow up, I guess your opinions and like the way you experience things change slightly, so you get that as well. You just mentioned Greek tragedy. Um, obviously, the video has not got too much to do with the the story no. behind it. Um, you said eighty percent of your lyrics and stuff are actually based on true events. Anyway, I mean, you're sitting here; you weren't murdered by some mad fan. But is there any bit of truth? Do you have like fans? Crazy as not trying to kill you, but have you experienced like some pretty crazy stuff in that direction, which maybe gave the idea, like, hey, we have got this girl stalking us or something like that? No, no. The video came from it was this this young Irish director, Finn Keenan. Um, we wanted something that had like a start, a middle, and an end, like story. To make a how can a dream, how can a great tragedy happen with the band, the one that's that's like you know it's a. That's the good scenario for that at the moment, I suppose. Obviously, Greek tragedies always end in um, somebody getting killed and stuff. So he came up with this idea, and we were like, "Yeah, that, that you know, the final scene when we're all hanging there, like dead. That was just something we couldn't couldn't miss out on there." Uh, the image was so strong, and yeah, yeah, it's like he made it in. Yeah, but we've been really lucky with fans. To be honest, like our fans are the ones. It's so really nice, and we just chatting yeah. like. Like proper, like proper nice. Mm. Um, I reckon you've got some awards for best video also coming up this year, which you can <laughs> send straight to Ireland then. So, um, you've got one new song in the album, Poet Emoticons, which gives us another reader question, which was I mean, we all use smartphones, we're all kind of addicted to them, I guess. So it doesn't change if you're in a band. Mm. What emoticons do you like, do you love, do you use, and which ones are just waste of time to get on your nerves. That's what our readers were interested in. So. Right. Um, I mean, I don't really use emoticons that much, to be honest. Like, there are some friends who will, you know, use them, so then sometimes I write them back. My parents are crazy on them. Like, they go, my parents go crazy <laughs> on the emoticons. Oh, it's emojis, isn't it? Emoticons is like the, the older version. Colon brackets and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not... Your parents are, but you're not really the... Yeah, no, yeah, no, I, I never use them. Okay. No, my my, my mum and dad never use emoticons, they wouldn't even know what they are. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think Murph likes, he likes using them. That's obviously where that came from. He was probably trying to fix an argument with a girlfriend with <laughs> emoticons and it wasn't really helping. <laughs> and so another song started there, so that's where we've got that influence circle closed again. Yeah. Like, just try and solve situations, you might get a song called emoticons. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, one question I always quite enjoy asking bands is that if you could swap seats with me now. So imagine like you were a teenager sitting next to whoever from the musical area obviously. Who would you be interviewing? We've had some crazy answers on this one. Um, well when I was like 16, 17 I probably would have wanted to interview the Foo Fighters. I would have been there and I would have wanted to meet Dave Brown. Like Just shit yourself there. Mm. No, I would have had some yeah. questions to yeah. ask him. He's probably like I might have had to wear a nappy, like. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Radiohead maybe it could be interesting. It's quite difficult, though, maybe. So it could be. Um, I don't really know. We did the interview with Paul McCartney once. Yes. <gasps> On radio. That was insane. Wow. You can't get much bigger than that, yeah. you, I don't think you can. When you say we taught. Well, I, 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 I didn't I actually broke. say a word, he <laughs> actually broke. did shit himself, I think. Yeah, I was like, yeah, there was no words coming out, there was not, <laughs> nothing. And me and Murph just got a bottle of wine and sat there and just like started drinking and... So and how? It was like, basically live on Radio 1, massive, uh, obviously the pressure of knowing how many people are listening and stuff, we were like, Well, and sitting with Paul McCartney? No, he was on the phone, it was like I'm a just, live, okay. you know, he was just, he was at home, I guess. And, but he was he was such a nice guy and he was really easy to interview and really forthcoming with like answers and stories and he told, he told one story like at the end we said what's what's like your fondest memory uh, 
you know, in your musical career, and you told this story about like that started. Oh, you know, uh, me, George, and John were um, in uh, this conservative club in Liverpool back when we were like 17, and this lady was heckling us, um, and uh, George didn't take too kindly to her heckles, so he poured his pint of beer on her head. And we had to get out of there, and like as soon as he mentioned George, John, and Ringo, whatever, it was, it was actually, I don't think it was Ringo at the time, but you know, we, me and Matt just went. He's just casually using his name and the, like, <coughs> it, it was, uh, that was insane. Been on the road for so long that you just know how everything works and it's just routine every day. Like, is the plan to be carrying on for ages forever? Uh, there's no such thing as forever, but yeah, as long as we're, uh, as long as we're still loving it and uh, I hope we get to keep going for as long as possible, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I have no idea what we would do if we didn't have that, you know, like, it's, it's one of those things that it's, if you chose that kind of, like, lot, uh, to, to live that lifestyle and if you enjoy that as well, it's, like, very addictive as well. It's yeah, very yeah. difficult to see yourself not doing it. So, um, We've been yeah. a band for 11 years now as well, so it's, like, yeah. it's, a, it's a third of our lives. Um, so it'd be kind of weird if there'd be a big, a big gaping hole if we weren't doing the one bats anymore. Also, we don't really tour all the time, so we get, we get a bit of both. So like when we when we finish touring, we, we spend like maybe a year at home and kind of like get some sort of no normality back in our yeah. lives, and you know enough in normality to the point that we kind of oh we're getting a bit like you know restless. Get restless. We need to get itchy fingers. Want to go back out and and play, and and just in time we get to go back out on touring, and it's like. Super. Go, go, it's go. like it's like being like mm. you know you know a teenager again or like you know <laughs> where how we felt when we first started the band and it's uh, it's nice to get that that feeling. Yeah. Is there anywhere you haven't played where you'd like to go? A country, a festival, maybe even a venue. Anywhere we haven't been. <laughs> really, like I just yeah. I just want to go places that we haven't been and yeah. And places we have been. <laughs> Yeah, but that, yeah, I mean, a lot of the yeah. time we do anyway, but like, you know, it's, it's, it's really fun to go to a country or like, you know, a, a part of the world that, you know, that we've never been before. It's always, um... It's always surprising if people like know, you know, the songs and stuff. We went to Mexico City for the first time, like, two years ago, um, and didn't know what to expect, obviously, and like, the people there had like made a flag and like, you know, singing along and it's always, uh, yeah, it's amazing. We're very lucky. South America is definitely a place that we'd like to, you know, because we've played Brazil, and apart from that, we haven't played anywhere. 